Today I'm going to compare two cameras that are pretty similar, the Fuji X-E1 and the Fuji X-E2. The X-E2 was my first Fujifilm camera, I got it in early 2020. For me it was a great compromise as a capable X-series camera that was cheap enough at the time and a great introduction to the system. After using it for a while I sold my APS-C Sony a couple of broken Leicas and bought a bunch of Fujifilm camera bodies and lenses. The XE1 I found super cheap for $150 in like new state at my local camera shop, so I couldn't resist getting it. Both these cameras have 16 megapixel sensors which are very similar to each other. The sensor in the XE1 gets a lot of credit being the same X-Trans1 sensor as in the X-Pro1. The sensor in the X-E2 adds some face detector points, but that's about it. Image quality is frankly very similar, and I think discussions about which one is better are about differences in JPEG processing at best, or subjective perception at worst. Since I shoot almost exclusively RAW, I really don't notice much of a difference there. What does affect image quality is handling and features. Even though the electronic viewfinders are very similar, the XE1 only has wide focus peaking, and that makes it very hard to use with manual lenses. The XE2 lets you select the peaking color, so you can for example set the simulation to black and white and the peaking to red. Besides that, the face detection points in the XE2 allow for a split prism simulation manual focusing mode. The face detection points also make the XE2 out of focus much better. It is not great by modern standards, but it is a lot more usable than the autofocus on the X-E1. About focus peaking, I have to say that in general I don't like the peaking on Fuji cameras too much. I prefer the peaking on the Sony a7 II for example. It feels less noisy and overall lets me find focus much faster. The X-E1 doesn't have Wi-Fi and most importantly for me, it doesn't have an electronic shutter. Shutter speed tops at 1 4 thousandths of a second and that means you cannot shoot some lenses fully open in daylight. It's amazing how modern cameras have spoiled us. Back in the film era, 1 4 thousandths of a second was something only higher end cameras had. Handling is very similar between the X-E1 and X-E2. The X-E2 also wins here though, because it has more programmable buttons, but in general both bodies are very very similar, so much so that it is hard to tell them apart when you have both of them. All in all, the X-E2 is a much better camera in my view, although if you want the Fuji look and are okay with slower autofocus and shutter speeds, the X-E1 is an excellent choice. They are getting more rare these days, because the X-E1 is acquiring the fame of the poor man's X-Pro2, but you can still find them for just over $200 or so. All this said, I haven't been using the X-E2 too much lately. If I want the X-Trans2 sensor, I prefer the X-T1, and if I want the rangefinder style layout, I have an X-E3. Check out my photos at juanbuehler.com, and until the next video, cheers and goodbye.